All right, let's talk about shares of Zoom as well. That's something else we're watching closely today. The shares down 12% after Zoom posted slowing second quarter revenue uh, growth of 8% and also slashed its full year guidance. The software company cited the U.S. dollar and slowing consumer sales as the reasoning behind the hit to revenue. Its enterprise business fairly robust. Joining us now to discuss is Zoom CFO Kelly Steckelberg. Kelly, it's always great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to ask you, first of all, about the forecast and kind of how you characterized it and broke it down. You talked about macroeconomic pressure. You talked about pressure from the stronger dollar. And I'm wondering sort of how you break all of that out. And in other words, when you're looking at what's pressuring the forecast, how do you figure out what's macroeconomic? How do you figure out what is just lower demand, for example, from consumers? So we have two pretty distinct segments of our business. We have the enterprise segment, which we are pleased with the performance there. It grew 27% year over year in Q2. And we continue to see highlights there, for example, with Zoom phone, which crossed over the 4 million seat mark. Where we are seeing pressure is in our online segment of the business. And this segment of the business is much more exposed to the strengthening dollar, as you mentioned, as well as macroeconomic, especially in Europe. So we actually saw revenues from Europe decline 8% year over year. And that was largely concentrated in our online segment of the business. And as we look forward, unfortunately, we expect some of that trend to continue through the rest of the year, which is what contributed to our lower guidance for the rest of the year as well. And so, Kelly, I guess with what you had discussed on the call as well in this return to normalized sales cycles, what type of revenue growth rate and even margins on that should investors expect? Yeah, so what we touched on is in the enterprise segment of the business, as we have now gone back to the majority of our revenue coming from the enterprise segment of the business is 54% of our revenue in Q2. And the fact that we have really moved beyond the pandemic buying patterns that we've seen over the last couple of years, we are back to true enterprise linearity, which means a lot of these deals come at the end of the quarter, which that also results in the fact that they contribute very little revenue in the quarter themselves. They contribute to deferred revenue, which was up year over year and greater than it was up greater than we had forecast, but they have very little impact in the quarter itself. And so as we expect those trends to continue, that is also built into our forward looking guidance. Kelly, uh, you know, I didn't hear much on the conference call last night about more closely managing expenses. That seems to be the buzzword in tech land. How are you approaching that? So we did talk about in our prepared remarks that we are taking a prudent and cautious approach as we look forward in the second half of the year. We are absolutely continuing to hire, but we're doing that in very focused, high ROI areas, which for us really includes our R&D teams, as well as sales, partner enablement, and product marketing. We did highlight that our gross margins were 78.9% in Q2, and we expect them to continue in the range of 78% for the rest of the year, which is higher than we had expected. And we did maintain our full year outlook for 33% non-GAAP operating margins as we're able to manage these expenses through the back half of the year, even with the, the lowered top line forecast. In the services that your portfolio of clients already buy into right now, where have you seen the, the best ability to kind of cross sell into some of the other products and services that, that you've brought forward? And, and, and how does that really contribute to not just the growth, but also where you're able to see add on margins for, for some of those larger customers as well? Yeah. So we are making great progress in making this transition from being a meeting app to a full unified communications platform. And Zoom phone was certainly a star in the quarter crossing over that 4 million seat mark. We're also really thrilled with the performance of Zoom Contact Center, which had some great names that we'll be excited to tell you about as they continue to deploy. And they also, we're seeing seat sizes sold in Zoom Contact Center only six months into the life of this product that we would not have expected for a couple of years. So that's really great to see. And then also Zoom IQ for sales, which is also a new product, is really starting to contribute as well. So we're looking forward to this full suite of platform products that are really gonna enable the future growth, especially in our enterprise segment. 
Yeah, Kelly, everybody was talking about the, the phone, Zoom phone, um, in terms of analyst notes and really highlighting that as an area of growth for you. I think what is more than doubled, right, um, in terms of the number of, of, of customers, individuals using the Zoom phone. What do the margins look like on that product and, and what are some of the goals and targets you guys have for it? Yeah, so Zoom phone has very high operating margins. As we said, our long-term target for the company operating uh, gross margins, excuse me, is 80%. And that includes the contribution from Zoom phone. And what we see is that it's typically an add-on. Our sales strategy is it's an add-on to an existing customer. So it continues to increase the revenue that we're getting from each individual account. And that's why we've also talked about, we really expect the future growth in the enterprise segment to continue to come from expanding the experiences and the products that we're selling into our existing install base. Kelly, uh, you teased in uh, an investor day uh, on November 8th. To the extent you could, you know, what is the sustainable growth rate for the top and bottom line for a company like Zoom at this point in the cycle? So that will be one of the highlights that we will share at Zoomtopia and our analyst day on November 8th. We will be thrilled to have our investors there. It gives us an opportunity to spend a little more time, go deeper into the story and share things like our long-term operating margins, our long-term targets, as well as potentially seeing long-term growth. But really that will come when we give uh, FY24 guidance on our Q4 call. Zoom CFO, Kelly Steckelberg, joining us here this morning on Yahoo Finance Live. Thanks so much for the time, we appreciate it. Thanks for having me.